notato su un muro alcuni graffiti. Quasi tutti raffiguravano delle, delle, delle armi, degli RPG, che sono dei, dei lanciarazzi. Uno di questi ragazzi è passato di fronte al muro e il contrasto tra, tra, tra la realtà che raffiguravano questi graffiti, cioè la guerra, e il ragazzo, la, le, il bambino, è stato così forte che è venuto da, da scattare la foto. Sono sempre stato attratto da queste figure perché sono uh, dal modo in cui sono dei ragazzi vulnerabili che cercano di di difendersi a vicenda, si è presente i, i, i balloons nei, nei fumetti no? Con, che rappresentano i pensieri del, del soggetto e sembrano quasi i suoi pensieri, no? questi RPG, o... è quasi come se questo bambino avesse soltanto questi pensieri, come se questa fosse l'unica realtà che lui conosce. So we go to the hospital and the first thing I smell is a, a huge smell of chlorine. Uh, I ask the people, what's happening with you? And the man in the middle of the picture, I'm asking him and he just, you know, reacting as he wanted to say something, but he couldn't say anything. After that, I understand that he, he don't want to, to answer. He just want to try and take a breath. This is this massacre without uh, uh, blood, you know, without wounds the wounds inside their lungs, in, inside their chest. And there is so many people say there is no chemical attack happened. When you see this picture, the people now around the world know about my, my, my broken heart now. This is a couple of ex-FARC fighters. Um, you know, during the guerrilla warfare, the women were accepted in the FARC, but the, the, they were forbidden to be pregnant. It was uh, very clear in the rules. Uh, you are equal as men, uh, so you don't uh, have babies. It's her sixth pregnancy. She had five pregnancies in the jungle, five abortions. They gave away the weapons and the same month they, 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 they have the babies. It was really immediate thing. So that's why I think the subject, it's, the angle that I chose is interesting because it's the, the post-conflict and how you, you, you come from a weapon to a baby. Uh, and that helps to the transition of a civil society. On this day, we were waiting for uh, Saudi investigators uh, to arrive, uh, to enter the consulate. They were investigating the, the murder of uh, journalist Jamal Khashoggi. And it was difficult because it wasn't a very visual story. Uh, obviously, it was about someone who'd gone missing, so your main subject wasn't there. And, it's become a symbol for, for journalism and press freedom. Uh, you know, last year was a very unusual year with the situation with journalists all over the world. I mean, I think there was, off the top of my head, in a recent report, 80 journalists killed last year. Um, that doesn't take into account deportations, arrests, silencing, and also just the general undermining of, of journalism. I had been photographing U.S. Border Patrol agents working on the U.S.-Mexico border. And they took a group of asylum seekers, immigrants who had just come across the border from Mexico, into custody. And the border agent asked the mother to set her little girl on the ground while the mother was searched. It was a very dark night. There was no moon out. Uh, people were crossing the river which separates Mexico from the United States. They were crossing in rafts and coming up on the U.S. side. In the moment I took this picture, I knew it was important. I knew that um, it was telling part of the story that um, had not been told during that period of time. Uh, what I did not know is that it would have the incredible global impact that it did. This is a picture of Petronella. Petronella is in Zimbabwe. She's a, a lead member of the Akashinga all-female ranger conservation group. Um, in this picture, she's completing her final phase of, of um, you know, learning, how, learning concealment and movement in the bush without being detected, which is an important part of their training and their anti-poaching procedures. These Akashinga women have become role models in their communities, you know, to a large extent because there are none. You know, it's, they haven't been allowed, they haven't had the opportunity to develop their own potential. It's a great statement for African women, that's for sure, you know, because they're always getting the short end of the stick, you know. No one, you hardly ever hear people celebrating rural African women, and there's, it's hundreds of millions of them, you know.